20 years since uh, Bobby left us. It, uh, that, that time has gone incredibly quickly, Martin, hasn't it? It's gone so quickly, it's unbelievable where time goes. I think the older you get, the more quicker it goes, to be honest with you. But uh, it was such a sad day because he was such a great guy and, uh, you know, having played with him for so many years, it was a disaster for me and for Jeff Hurst as well. <laughs> you, you, you're from Dagenham. I think uh, Bobby's from Barking, so... You, you grew up in the same area. When, when was the first time that your paths crossed as uh, players? Well, I was born in Plasto and moved right. to Dagenham when I was four. Yeah. Um, but I came here when I was 15 and Bobby was maybe two or three years older than that. So he was here, I suppose. But uh, I, all it was for me, I was just trying to get to stay at the club. And uh, when I was 17, it was, it was done, but then obviously Bobby, I think, was then getting into the first team as well and playing for the first team, so I wasn't really, you know, that close to him at that stage. It's only when I kind of got into the reserves and then made my debut in the first team that uh, he became the man that I really enjoyed playing with. Was he of any help to you when you broke into the first team? Obviously, he was in the first team before you. Did he, did he give you any help and advice, that kind of thing? Well, you knew that uh, always that Bobby would be backing you. You know, I, I played left side in midfield on my debut and Bobby was playing behind me at le left half. So I had uh, an association with him and he would talk to me and help me and, you know, try to do as much as he poss possibly could to make me come through the system. Everyone has got memories of him, or people of my age anyway, as a, as a player and um, people who knew him as a person. What, just from your point of view, what, just describe him, first of all, as a player, what kind of player he was. Well, he could do anything. You know, he did score goals, he got a few goals every now and again, and he was a great defender. And he, he knew exactly what he wanted to do, he, and he, he marked people out of the game. And, uh, you know, he was just a wonderful, wonderful player. You know, he, he, well, he played so many times for England, didn't he? So. Yeah. You know, and then he was the captain in the World Cup final, and uh, was a captain who went up and lifted that trophy. Yeah, it must be, he must have loved that Bob. He must have he walked along the top and lifted it to the crowd. I mean, that, even me talking about it now makes me feel very my heart's yeah. clumping because he was such a great man, and to do that, you know, I didn't get a chance to do it, but Bobby did it, and it was fantastic for him. And there was that great moment when uh, he was walking along. To, uh, to shake hands with the Queen and he wiped his hands. That was that was kind of typified him in a way, just a, a bit of class in, yeah. in, that, in that atmosphere. Absolutely, you know, he, he, he was a great man, you know, everything. But you couldn't say much about him that wasn't great. He was just a tremendous man and uh, to play with him for my, you know, because I tended to play just in front of him and, and he was great and he, he helped and he, he, you know, there was a couple of goals that he hit crosses for. Free kicks. He used to take free kicks, and there's a couple of games that were very big games we scored from. So he wasn't just a defender. He, he did get forward and take free kicks. And we used to work it together. And what kind of captain was he? We know what kind of player he was. What kind of captain was he? He wasn't um, too demonstrative. He probably did he lead by example. That kind of captain. Well, I think he did. He lead by, lead by example. If, if he wanted to tell you something, he would make sure he did. Um, and, you know, as I said before, that uh, at times I played in front of him and it was great to play in front of him because we'd pass the ball to each other on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, and although he didn't get forward that, that much, he did score the odd goal now and again. And as I said before, that some of his crosses were perfect for people like Jeff Hurst and myself to get on the end of. So that, he had everything, really. He, he was a great guy. I remember going on the holiday the same place as we once, him with his wife and my wife, and we met up on, on the holiday as well, we had a little chat, and I just loved being with him. He wasn't the quickest as a player. How, how would he cope with the game now, which is obviously more physical, quicker? How do you think he'd cope now? Well, I wouldn't say he wasn't the quickest, but he, he could read the game. He could read the game perfectly, and it, you know, that, that was what he was there for. If, if, the ball was coming up fast or someone was making a run beyond him, he would, he would make sure they were marked or the ball was collected or, you know. Obviously he can't do everything, but uh, he, he, he would just uh, read the, the way the ball was going to come and he would stay in that space. Well, if you look at the, uh, if I'm right in saying, Jeff first last go in the World Cup final, 
he hit a great ball out from the back yeah. to Jeff. And Jeff went on, on and on and lashed it and it went in the back of the net. So Bobby obviously played that ball from the back. So, you know, he, he was just great of anything. You couldn't really criticise him with anything at all. Do you, do you remember any particular games, outstanding games, where you think uh, Bobby was a just just fantastic game? I mean, obviously the World Cup final is the one everyone remembers, but maybe a West Ham game where he was particularly outstanding? Well, I suppose the year before when we won the, uh, the, Europa, the Cup. It wasn't the Cup Winners' Cup, it was the Europe Cup, wasn't it? I don't know what it was European called, actually. Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we played a Wembley against 1860 Munich. Yeah. And uh, the first goal, I think, was a free kick. Once again, he took a free kick. And I went up there um, to see if I can get on the end of it. And it came across, and I didn't really get on the end of it. It kind of hit me and ran to Alan Seeley, and Alan Seeley knocked it in. So, and uh, also, there was another time uh, when um, we were playing, I think it was the Germans as well. He took the free kick, so almost the same, the same place, and knocked it in, and Jeff got on the end of it and scored. So he was also, also very good at just pulling balls down, knocking it into the space. That's what you had to do, and that's why I kind of tried to tell people when I went to Norwich, you know, I would, I would stand on the near post and hopefully they would knock it into the space and I would run to the space and flick it on. And the goals we scored was quite a lot. And it's 20 years ago, but um, he's, he, he'd be a hero forever for the West Ham fans and he'll never be forgotten. And you, make, you go to Wembley and there's a statue of him there and there's a statue just down the road from here. So um, he'll never be forgotten. No, we'll never ever be forgotten as, as long as life goes on and the World Cup goes on. Are England ever going to win the World Cup again again? I'm not so sure. Because there aren't any Bobby Moores around. Really. Because he was such a wonderful man on and off the pitch. And, you know, he was fantastic to play with him, fantastic to be with him, and uh, it, it was just a, a marvellous man.